Well, hello there. This is Shane with Shane's Reviews, and I hope you are having a great day today. What are we going to be talking about? Well, remember whenever I ripped Marco close a, a new one? The Aftershocks. Well, there's a new one that came out called Ballistic, and of course it's book two. So the problems that I had, just to recap on the original one, was that it seemed like some of the situations were just going to be too easy for the author versus the characters, that this guy, Aiden, he was just from a silver spoon, decided he didn't like his station in life, and threw his lot in with a group of people that started a war, they lost the war, then he went to prison, and it was just so much circumstantial type things, and it seemed like it was setting up for just easy stuff. So I didn't know how I felt about it, but the way that it ended was kind of abrupt, which some of Marco's books are like that, but you can see it coming and it's not so much the spaghetti western cliffhanger type of a scenario. I read the next one because I was like, I want to make sure that I give dues where they belong. And so that's what we're going to get into today. Now, the narrations was done by Angelo Di Loretta. The person reading does an incredible job with the narrations. So that's that's a good thing. So am I going to recommend this one? I'm still on the fence about recommending this series because it's not that it was bad and it's not that it was good, but so far there's been two books of like exposition, really. Now there are some things that happen, but it seems like it's so much on the back end and what people are feeling and things that people are thinking and all of that. Even though there should be like these explosive scenes, to me they're just not coming off. They're just not there. And I know that it's not that Marco Close is a bad author. So I'm kind of I'm kind of torn about it, really. Because I really like sci-fi, and I find myself wanting to like these books. It's a story that I've read before. And it's not that it's plagiarized, it's not. But I mean, you've got the main character trying to get a hold of his sister in the first book. Kind of does, and then connects with her in the second book. Okay, cool. Then we also have the background of his dad. He doesn't like his dad. His dad may or may not have done something. It could have been completely coincidental. It might not have been his dad that caused it at all. Then again, it could have been his dad that caused it all, because his dad is a resilient butt. There's not a comma but and something following that. He is just a but. And we get to know some other characters, but it's it's almost lackluster. I mean, there's these things that are happening that should be so grandiose. Like, there's a nuclear strike in this book against something, and it could spark an entire war. But I find myself really not caring. And I think it's because of the amount of exposition on certain characters that is causing me to just, eh, sorry about your plight, but... Why do I care? And I don't want to be that person, but you kind of have to ask that when you're writing a story. What is the motivation? Why does somebody want to finish the story? Why do they care? Is it an anti-hero that's completely lovable? Is it whatever? And I'm just, I'm not getting that. I think that what I'm supposed to like is Aiden, which is a man of multiple identities. He's, he's trying to get himself to be legitimate, it appears, but he knows the choices he's made and the way he's gone about it. He won't actually be able to do that. So, you know, all right, I don't really care about that because he's smart enough to know that he should do this, but he's not. It sucks for him. His plight sucks. But on the same token, where's his actual struggle? It's not there. So then we look at his sister, right? She was abandoned by him whenever she was much younger. And she's left with a father that is a butt. He wants her to run his company. And she ends up holding the, the fate of the family because of a Artemis treaty. It was a technicality where she ended up being young enough that on that day, she was the only one that could inherit. So she does. She goes to business college. She comes back with a pretty sharp hat on her shoulders. And her chip is, I don't want to be my dad. Don't get me wrong. I understand. But on the same token, he was a ruthless businessman. He has a product that they make. If you think back to Star Trek, the aluminum that was clear, that kind of stuff. So that's really the only patent to value that they have. They were a big time manufacturer before the war. After the war, everything got split up. Well, kind of, but not really. So it's one of those stories that's really not resonating with me. And I don't know if it's because these are patterns of things that are important to perhaps another culture. And because of me growing up not in that culture, I'm missing it altogether. Could be. Let's be fair. Let's look at what happened with Germany, because I know that Marco Close, he came from Germany. So he'll know things 
and there will be things that are important to him and his German audience or people that are more familiar with all this than people that live on other sides of the planet. Because yes, America was involved, but let's be upfront and honest, the American school system, it really fails in not showing the entire picture. So that might be where some of the story notes are coming from that I'm missing. So it could be just me that maybe the book's just not for me because as a good friend of mine, Rob Dirk said, you know, not every story from every author is going to be for every person. And it kind of resonated with me whenever he said that. I'm sure that as an author, they get that kind of a thing and I had never stopped to think about it because it's a story that's important to the person writing it. But it might not be important to the person that's reading. And so without those backgrounds, without having experienced some of these things, there may be no way for me to be able to actually get into this series, which would be unfortunate because I really like to read Margot Close. So I find parts of it absolutely fascinating, but other parts of it just seem to drone on about these details that really don't seem like they're adding up to anything at this point. For the love of God, man, get to the point. <laughs> I love you. But please, get to the point. It does have all the hits of a sci-fi book that we usually talk about on this channel. It has space. It has people traveling from here to here. There's different planets. There's these huge apocalyptic things that could occur that would get a entire civilization pinned against another civilization and then them fighting it out, etc. So those are there. There's warships. There's navy. There's all these things that hit all the notes of things that I find interesting and some of you guys and gals do too. The dialogue is good, characters are well wrote, but for me right now, I'm just not getting it. I'm just not there. Getting towards the middle point to the end of the book, there's a bomb that's dropped on the people that had technically won the war and of course everything starts to get put on lockdown and then story over. It was so abrupt the way that it stopped. I mean, um, I'm kind of grandstanding a little bit. There was more that happened after the bomb, but I don't want to give all that away. So essentially, it it's that. It's that for the second book in this series, both of them had just a dead stop on their ending. I'm not resonating with the story, and that's probably why I'm not going to be able to say, yeah, get it. You're going to love it, because I'm not sure if an American audience is going to be able to appreciate it. Now, as far as like feelings of the book while I was reading it, I, it, I was very deadpan while I was listening. And it wasn't from lack of trying on the narrator's part. I don't think that there's things that are missed by the narrator on this. There are subtle nuances in the way that this person is changing their voice, the way that they're portraying the different characters. Characters don't bleed into each other. Uh, chapters don't bleed into each other. So it's it's well produced. It's well narrated. Uh, but as far as me feeling deadpan on it, it's because of what I was mentioning before. It's not resonating with me because I don't have that life experience to be able to understand where the author is indeed coming from on that, which kind of makes me both happy and sad at the same time. As far as other things, like I said, production was good. Narration was good. The story's actually good. I just don't feel it. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure if I can answer that, if it's worth your time, efforts, energies, money, all that kind of thing at this point. I'm gonna put a little thumbtack in it and whenever the third one comes out, then we'll come back around to it and check it out. And if it's finally to that point, then I'll say, my God, yes, please. If not, then I'll just tell you the same. You know, I'm pretty, pretty upfront about these things. So with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. This is the actual end of the video. Scraps would like to thank you. And I would like to thank you for making it this far. You are our coffee. Because without coffee, I can't get anything done. <laughs> like, share, subscribe. This is Shane with Shane's Reviews. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Not sure which one of these YouTube is going to want you to watch. If you pick one of these two before I stop jabber jawing, then you'll get to see us again.